when you're in that flow of, I'm not looking at the time, not getting up for another cup of coffee, I'm like in and I'm flowing and something is working through me and you know, you'll know you even forget what you said or it's like thinking about teaching like the best yoga class ever but you forget what you taught and it's like you're in flow, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. There's no resistance, it's just flow. And how I can get my clients more into that is like I help you market your dharma, right? Like when you're in flow, here doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're in service, you're in alignment with self, and my strategies and my classes, my gift and goal is to get people to just shift enough into wanting this kind of marketing and promotion because then the strategies work. So the mindset has to come first. And welcome to Curious Ones Podcast by Andara. I'm Yael Ginsberg, the host of the podcast, a yoga and meditation teacher and philosophy lover. Each week you will hear eye-opening interviews with the different teachers of the Andara Yoga Institute, located in beautiful Baja, Mexico, along with other teachers that pass through here. This life-changing knowledge shared through authentic, heartfelt communication will help you live a happier, more fulfilled, and connected life. Let's dive in. Hello, welcome back to Curious Ones Podcast by Yandara. I'm Yael Ginsberg, and I'm so happy to be here with the lovely Krista Ripma. Krista is the founder of Authentic Audience, a digital marketing agency that believes marketing should be honest. Uh, she's a retreat leader, a podcast host, and a mama. So welcome to the podcast, Krista. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm such a fan of Yandara and this podcast, so thanks for having me. Mm, well, I have to tell you that you're actually one of the first people that I wanted to interview for the podcast because mm. you were leading a retreat at Yandara. I think it was maybe not even the last retreat that you did, the one before that. Mm -hmm. And that was the week that I got the okay from Yandara to do this project and you were there. I had no idea. Yeah. And then I saw that you're doing like business and spirituality and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, this is exactly the people I want to interview. Yay. <laughs> well, here I am. No, yes. I'm really, I'm really happy. I'm um, Yondara. I'm obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, then you're familiar with Yondara Yoga Institute and it's just was such a catalyst for me in my yoga journey, my Reiki journey, and my business journey. I was doing marketing and teaching the business of yoga um, at Yandara teacher trainings, and I was helping Allison, and I would just spend lots of time down on that land. And so now that I get to lead my own body, mind, business retreats there with Allison teaching and um, the sound baths and the ocean and the food. It's just like a dream. Incredible, incredible. So I want to dive right in. And today I want to talk with you business because, <laughs> because I love how you connect spirituality and our dharma and our purpose on earth with actual real life business techniques and perspectives. So I would love to hear a little bit from you about kind of how you got to where you are and to what do you attribute your success on where you are now today? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a really good and big question. So. Just a little bit of my backstory, I guess. Um, I was always really moved by visual storytelling. I thought I wanted to be a movie producer or director, and I just loved the way that you could communicate 
um, powerfully through images and stories. And so I went to school for film. I went right after that to work in the film industry in LA and very quickly started working my way through networking and got myself a job um, just reading thousands of scripts. And so my job was reading scripts that people, writers, were hoping to get turned into TV shows or movies. And since I read so many of them, I got really good at knowing if it was going to be a hit. Um, and I really attribute <laughs> my ability to like know a hit um, in how fast I had to read those scripts because I could tell in the first 10 pages if it was going to be picked up. And wow. that I think has stuck with me. I very I had no yoga practice at that point. I had always been a dancer. I didn't have a deep spiritual practice. In fact, just the opposite. Um, I had a Catholic grandmother who really um, threw me out of her heart and was not supportive of my lifestyle. And so I was almost like anti spirituality, anti, you know, like pushing that away, even though I was like clearly deep seeking. And so I left the TV industry because I, I was working like a hundred hour weeks on these shows that I would never watch. Like it just wasn't feeling in alignment, even though I loved it. I love the storytelling and I love everything about it. And that's when I really started to find my yoga practice. And that's when I started going deeper into the spiritual place and world. I started working for a production company um, that was a health and wellness network. And so I started seeing that you could actually combine like the storytelling and the power of marketing and all of this with like promoting health and wellness and heart centered things. And so that was like a pivotal moment for me. And then at that point, I found myself working with Yoga Girl um, in 2014. That was and still is one of the biggest yoga brands. Actually, funny story, her husband, Dennis, did Yandara Yoga as his teacher training. <laughs> and um, wow. so it's just always been there. And learning from her was really big. I was able to go on many, many yoga retreats. I was able to launch many, many yoga offerings, and I realized I can combine my love for business and growth and marketing and storytelling with this like deep practice of yoga. And at that time, I was having this like massive spiritual awakening, and I believed then and I believe now, the more butts on mat, the better the world. So I'm like, I can get butts <laughs> on mats. Um, so I started marketing yoga studios and yoga teacher trainings. And it was at that time that I got my yoga teacher training through Yandara. I met Allison, who has become just a lifelong mentor, sister, friend um, in this journey. And I was certified in Reiki. And it was in that moment that everything changed. So when Allison attuned me to level one, I like kid you not when I say I saw the light like it felt like someone was shining a flashlight in my eyes it was the most pure bright light and I knew that I just needed like it was like my dharma to bring my spiritual practice into my work and not keep it so separate and so soon after that, I was teaching yoga, I was um, doing the marketing, I was just so immersed in the business of yoga. And so that's where the business of yoga was born. I started teaching that and I realized I was really good at it. I could get people to feel something, shift something enough to like take action, which is really what we want people to do in the marketing world. And so I founded my business shortly after that in 2017 and we're just rooted in authentic marketing, radical honesty and Turns out people love that. People love the truth. People love vulnerability. People love people. People buy from people that they trust. And so the more we can market ourselves from this deep space of authenticity and truth and integrity, 
it actually works better. So that's great. So my strategies work and it's from this deep heart centered place. And now we're seven years old as a business and we've been able to just work with hundreds of businesses and we have scaled now past yoga. It was always my entry point was yoga teachers, yoga studios, yoga trainings. Um, I just felt this call, but there's so many people doing so much amazing work and I get to be a part of all of that now. So I like to say I amplify authentic brands um, because it's not really about what, what you do, it's about who you are. Um, and so that's where we are now. And my business and my spiritual practice are one in the same on a good day <laughs> when I'm like, you know, feeling in alignment like today and it feels like a prayer and my emails feel like service and the abundance feels like Shiva and it's all there, but it can be really easy to forget. Um, I think the brighter, the light, the darker, the shadow. So having this like success in business has also brought up so much for me on my spiritual path and just what my real purpose is here. And I'm still seeking, I'm deeply seeking, but I feel like there's a, there's a middle ground there and that's the Dharma. That's like aligning your calling with your work so that you're like body, mind, spirit and business. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the remembering our Dharma and the reason that we're doing it helps us deal with the challenging times. Absolutely. And just remembering like, and for those of you, you know, wondering what we mean by Dharma, it's for me, it's more than a calling. It's like what we're here to do. And when you're doing that thing, you feel in flow. So if you think about whatever it is that you do, whether it's singing or writing or building or spreadsheets, because let me tell you, that is an art. <laughs> finance is an art it is absolutely a divine art and dance and so whatever it is that you do when you're in that flow of I'm not looking at the time I'm not getting up for another cup of coffee I'm like in and I'm flowing and something is working through me and you know, you'll, you'll even forget what you said, or it's like thinking about teaching like the best yoga class ever, but you forget what you taught. And it's like, you're in flow. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. There's no resistance. It's just flow. And how I can get my clients more into that is like, I help you market your Dharma, right? Like when you're in flow here, doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're in service, you're in alignment with self and my strategies and my classes, my gift and goal is to get people to just shift enough into wanting this kind of marketing and promotion because then the strategies work. So the mindset has to come first. Um, and with Dharma, it can feel big because it's like, this is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. So the resistance and the ego and the self doubt, but it's like it, when we can quiet all of that, get out of your own way so that you can just do the damn thing. That's what it's all about. So for me, it's like, how do we remove all the blocks so that you can just live your Dharma <laughs> and stand in your truth? Because that's the frequency. I think that's going to really shift consciousness. Yeah. So I really want to ask you about removing those blocks. Do you work with clients about like, how do you find out what your blocks are and how do you get rid of them? Yes, absolutely. I think most of my work is mindset and the, I would say 25% is strategy. I am obsessed with data and marketing and numbers and making sure we're being the best stewards of your dollar and all of that stuff. But if I can help my clients shift the mindset first, the everything's just so much more in flow. And so that requires more work. And so 
What I like to tell people is that when you are in your dharma or in flow and um, on that path, the resistance is always going to be there because resistance is ego and our ego does not want our soul to win. And so the more our ego feels our soul winning, the louder it's going to get. So oftentimes those blocks look like imposter syndrome, like who am I to do this, self-worth, I'm not enough to do this, I don't deserve this kind of success. And so that kind of thing is something that I sit with people and work through and help make those shifts into self-love, into service. I think the easiest like shift out of ego is service. And Allison taught me this during our yoga teacher training, and I remember she said that when you shift into service, opportunities magically appear. And I never forgot that. And she was telling a story about how when she decided she wanted to be a yoga teacher and just serve in that way, she didn't have a car. There was like all of these obstacles sort of like stopping her from getting to that place. And all of a sudden a friend loaned her a car. Like it just like doors begin opening. But the secret is you actually have to feel in service. Like it's a real shift, but it's easy. I think than any other shift, like meeting resistance, that's a whole thing. But shifting into service is like, how can I be of service to my business, to my customers, to my students, to my audience today? and show up with inspiration, with love. For this podcast even, I am behind this morning. I wanted to look better, you look gorgeous. I wanted to have like, I wanted to get dressed, you know, and like put on makeup and I don't know, just appear a certain way and I just didn't have time, but that's not actually in service. Like that's my ego. In service was the five minutes I took to prep for this and sit and find the right link. You know what I mean? And just like be in service to the people listening because who's ever listening or watching, it has nothing to do with me. It's about what I can do and share for you. And so what I look like is almost irrelevant, <laughs> which is a hard thing for the ego. Like it's, it's not in service to do my makeup right now. It's in service to be on time and to be thoughtful and intentional and present with you. And that's what's in service to the people listening. And so that's an easy shift because now I'm not thinking anymore about my ego or how I look or how I sound. I'm thinking about, okay, what do they need to hear? And this was my prayer when I used to teach yoga. I would say this little prayer before every class was, Allow me to open my heart so they can open theirs and give them what they need. And I loved teaching yoga in this one room because it was dark. And so it was like really not about me. You know, like you couldn't even see yourself in the mirror. You couldn't even like catch your, so it, I could just be with them. And teaching a yoga class for me, going back to your question of what do you, what do you, um, like pinpoint for your success now, I think is learning how to teach a yoga class because that to me is the best marketing. It's the best sales. It's this opportunity to have real people in a room and curate the most magical experience they could ever feel, but they don't know why. But you know why. You know why. It was your talk. It was your sequencing. It was your music. It was the massage that you had at the end. It was the angel card you read at the beginning. It's your uniqueness that you're infusing into the class. Now, what about after the class? Are you saying, come back soon? Are you seeing, will I see you next week? Like, how are we doing this? And because I was teaching and marketing at that studio, it was blending. And so I was like, realizing it's just all in one, if I showed up as myself, cur curated an authentic, in-service, unique experience for people to shift something, and then continued to engage with them, follow up with them, love on them, they keep coming back. Because all we want in life is to be seen, especially by our yoga teachers. Like, there's no better feeling in the world than when a yoga teacher says like, great work, Hannah, you know, like in the class, it's like, oh, she sees me. 
And that's all anybody wants. And so my marketing strategies have really stemmed from that. It's like, how can I make this like a magical experience? But you don't know why, but I do. And so that success of being able to like teach like an amazing yoga class and have people continue to come back, you can't make it about you. They won't come back. You know, you've had those yoga teachers where they're just having a bad day and they just dump their baggage on you with like, no lesson and like no support. It's like no one wants that yoga class. So if you like think of your business as a yoga class, it it really helped me. Mm, wow, I love that perspective. And I think it's such an important shift because we can get so stuck on how we look. Does that video look perfect? Did I say the words exactly the right way? And then we don't post at all or we don't bring out what we want to bring out because we get caught up on the irrelevant things and miss out on the essence. And your point was so important, I think, that it's really about the essence. It's about how am I serving the people and not how am I serving myself or my ego. <laughs> Well, I think you're, the self-service comes in serving others. And so it's like more fulfilling that way. Yeah. And it's actually Christopher, who's I'm sure been on this podcast, um, has said to me, yeah, so he <laughs> is really funny because he is just like such a yogi. You know, he really walks his talk and lives on the land and like is just like I see him as like a modern day Jesus. I mean, he's even like a carpet. He even like is a builder. You know what I mean? Like he literally to me and he looks like Jesus. So he like embodies this like enlightened energy a lot of the time, which I'm sure people listening to this have picked up on. And so what he likes to say to me or what he used to say to me, I would be having this like big experience, like drama, just like blah. And he'd go, your humanity is showing. And I think our humanity in business is actually our superpower. And so in yoga, it's different because we actually want to observe our humanity, right? And like recognize it as separate from us. And, and it's like a different practice of like dropping back into the human, right? Um, Shiva Das down at Yandara he we were having we were talking about something one day and he goes oh that's just another unconscious being you know and everybody just has their ways of like speaking to people who you know are having a big human moment and i personally think that those human moments are what make us unique because we are here to have a human experience and so if you are going to post something and you're thinking about how you look and whatever, post about that instead. Post about your human. Post about the process that you're going through to be able to live your own dharma. Take us with you for the ride. Don't hide your human. And I think Christopher really helped me with that because he made me feel okay. Like it was almost funny. He's like, Oh, your humanity's showing Oh, There's your human. Like it was cute and sweet instead of this ugly thing. Because in the moment I was being jealous and I was being righteous and I was like talking bad about somebody to Christopher who's like, you know, doesn't really talk bad about people. And he goes, Oh, your humanity showing. But like with love, And with like tenderness, not like mean, um, but just like Christopher doesn't have a mean bone in his body. So, you know, just like kindness, but like a, mem a remembrance of like you're a human and that's okay. And in business, I think you're a human and how do we take those human things and showcase how unique you are because of those things. And so it's a little bit different than obviously like a yoga practice where you're constantly trying or especially Buddhism where you're constantly trying to like clear the mind and and get rid of the human in a lot of ways um, I like to lean into that which I feel like is a little bit more I don't know maybe Hinduism in my heart Buddhism in my head but yeah there's a devotion there's a loudness I want to dance I want to be fully in my human instead of escape it yeah wow I'm trying to like understand where that is really touching me because I don't know if I see the yoga practices getting away from your human because 
you know, our, our human experience, our body is part of the mm. spiritual experience. And it's mm. like the relationships and the challenges that we experience in relationships and in front of people and in the ego playing up is what brings us closer to our higher self or our yeah. true self. So well, it, that's living yoga. And I think you're yeah. totally right. I think living yoga, I mean, I remember... I remember like my first, yeah, not necessarily getting away from the human, but I think detaching enough to see it as separate maybe mm -hmm. because I used to remember like I could only have like not anymore, but when I first started this practice, I had so much just anxiety and, and energy. So I had, I would have to do like a very vigorous vinyasa practice in order to be able to then drop into a deeper meditation in Shavasana. And so I remember early on being like, if I can just get the energy out of my body so she can relax. So I started like separating. Um, and that was a really powerful experience. Like, oh, if she can just work it out, then she can be quiet enough for me to come alive, you know, mm -hmm. and really like separating it in that way. And so I think you're totally right. Um, it's not necessarily about getting away from it, but it's about like seeing it yeah. and not being like it, but watching it. And that shift has been huge. Like I do a self seeing self meditation where I like lift you up out of your body and look down at yourself and love yourself. And like, what does she need? What does she feel? You know, what does she need today? Like, how can we see and love her? And for some reason, that's easier. Mm -hmm. It's easier to like, look down at me and love me than like be in me. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that's kind of what I meant by like the, the separation that yoga brought me. Hey, I'm quickly interrupting the episode to extend an invitation. If you are interested in deepening into any of the subjects we talk about on the podcast, we offer many different experiences on our beautiful grounds here in Baja, Mexico. From nine-day modules such as sound healing and yoga nidra, to breath and meditation, as well as two or 300-hour yoga teacher trainings, and many different shorter retreats. Check out our website, yandara.com, to see all the information about the different experiences. Let's get back to the episode. I want to go deeper into the business and expand on what you were saying now, because I think this is something that I am 100% certain you deal with on a daily basis. People okay. following their passion and their dharma, their purpose, their, you know, their life's work and being really good at that. But then how do you know how to be also a business owner and an entrepreneur and a marketer on top of all of that, because it, they don't tell you this. They're like, okay, follow your passion, do what you love, do what you're good at. But actually what you need to learn is how to run a business, how to market yourself <laughs> and how to like sell or not even sell it to get yourself in front of the people who want what you want, what you're giving. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll let you know when I find the answer because <laughs> I was just yelling at my dad the other day. I was like, why did you not teach me this? You know, like what the hell, you know, and this is about taxes and financing and stuff like that. And he's like, you weren't interested. And I was like, I didn't get it. Like, I didn't get it. And I didn't understand like how important it was going to be to like an entrepreneurial experience is understand some of these fundamental things about business. And I joke with him all the time. I'm like, instead of sending my kid to college, I'm going to tell her she can do whatever she wants, travel, whatever she wants, but she has to have two years of schooling or lessons from my dad because <laughs> like I went to college for four years and I have no idea how to run a bit. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we doing here? And so first of all, I want to give everybody grace because whatever it is your calling is, unless it's in marketing and business, chances are 
it does it it has nothing to do with those things but it it needs those things right when you decide to take your when you decide to take your purpose or passion and turn it into a business now it becomes a real like entity where you have responsibility to be in service to that thing and so i think that's the first shift it's like if you just want this to be your hobby or passion that's fine but if you're ready to take this into a business model, then there are some responsibilities and service that comes along with that that we need to learn. But I can guarantee you that, you know, 90% of people listening to this did not get into whatever it is that they're doing to become this really successful person in business. They just followed their calling. And that's right. what happened to me. I just followed my calling. And then all of a sudden, two years ago, I'm seven months pregnant. I'm $50,000 in debt. I have a team of five people. I don't know what's going on because I don't know how to look at my finances right. And here I am like flailing and trying to figure out how to do this. So the answer is you figure it out. And there's so many experts out there. And so you don't need to have it all. You don't need to know it all. Like I hired somebody that could help me and teach me accounting and QuickBooks and spreadsheets. Even to this day, when I'm projecting my next 90 day revenue, I just have a spreadsheet that my person made me. And I know if I plug numbers in here, here and here, it will show up down here. And that's all I do to track it. You know what I mean? I'm still not like an expert by any means, but it's enough for me to feel safe in my nervous system that I know how to track these projections. And it's an up leveling to lean into this side. And so for me as a business owner, I realized that I had been avoiding the financials for way too long. I grew up with a dad that was very much in charge of that. Then I gave that task to my husband and then I hired somebody to do it for me. I never leaned into it. And so when all this shit hit the fan about two years ago, I was like, this is my business. This is my service and I'm going to lean in and serve my business in this way. And it has been the most empowering thing, learning money. Like I know money, I know taxes, I know LLCs versus S corps. And it's like, think of it as another thing you get to learn versus something, oh, I don't know. And I feel bad that I don't know that. It's like, oh, I get to learn this because this is in service to my calling. As far as marketing goes, there's amazing marketers out there. But again, as an entrepreneur, I do feel like we need to understand enough so we know who to hire. It's just about understanding enough so you know that you can pay people to do good work and you know that it's good work. Because I think a lot of the times when we don't know, we outsource it, but we still don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So we don't know if it's good work or not. We don't know if they're doing a good job or not. So I think we just need to know enough. And that's my job as a marketer is like, I'm trying to give people like the masses, the information, of like when you hire a marketer, here are the things to look for because there's lots of good marketers and you should not be losing money. If you are losing money, fire your marketer. Like that's the problem with not knowing because you'll just hire somebody and then you don't know. And so it's hard except all I have to say, nobody knows. And if you look at all these other successful businesses out there, somebody had to learn, like somebody had to either hire somebody or figure it out or learn and see it as like an opportunity for growth. Because for me, I avoided the financial side. I'm learning now how to um, create like streamlined operations. I mean, I'm using words that I never thought I would use and I'm wanting to scale and there's investors that want to give me money and so I have to do due diligence and I have to know these things and I saw the last two years for me as just like an empowerment. It was really empowering to learn these things and humbling to admit that I have a lot more to learn about running a business and it's just about like honoring where you are right now what's blocking you and is that something you can lean into on your own or do you need to talk to an expert about that and if so like book a free call most experts have a free call that you can ask some questions catch a vibe see if you trust them that kind of thing and just like do your own like 
everyone listening to this, I'm sure has like such a strong intuition. And so my biggest prayer for anybody scaling and growing is to not give your power away. Just because you don't know the answer doesn't mean you have to give your power away because you know your business, you know your clients, you know your audience better than anyone else does. Even though you don't necessarily know how to market to them or know how to charge them or send an invoice properly, that doesn't matter. You know them, you're connected to them. And so do not give your power away when you are hiring these things out. You know what's right for your business. You know what's right for you. Like stay in your power, even though you don't know the answer. You still don't have to give away your power. And that to me was like a huge lesson in like hiring people, but not letting them like bulldoze me energetically. And that's the most common thing I find is people hire a marketer or somebody that just like bulldozes them and they're like listening and doing all the stuff that they tell them. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. But what about you here? Like, what did you want to say? What do you want to do? So it's like really a collaboration between your humanity and then like finding those right people that are going to be a good fit for you. Mm-hmm. So for me, what I understand is like basically talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. That is what I do. I mean, I have now hired people and I'm, I have no shame in saying this. I barely know how to launch a Facebook ad. My, and that's what I do for a living because I'm on strategy. (laughs) Krista, Mm -hmm. my partner, Krista runs the Facebook ads. I don't need to know how to do that. She has somebody that works for her that can do that when she's offline. So as a business owner, also like staying in my lane has been really big. And I recently hired, like I hire people that are better than me at it. So I find people that are better than me and I let them do their job. And I find that when people are ready for that in marketing, they find me, they trust me, we run it, we roll it, and they get to do do what they do best. So it's like this win-win because I get to do this this morning and hang out with you and sit in my dharma of like sharing, communicating, connecting, intuition, all of that stuff. And my Facebook ads are being managed. And that's a great thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I lost my question. (laughs) I think too, you know, when it comes to like talking to someone too, it doesn't always have to be like a money thing. So I did want to say that like people love trade, like there's so many currencies um, out there. And so I just think that it doesn't need to stop you. Like even you and I right now, like we could find a way to trade our services. Like I think that the trade and barter system is powerful and to remember your own services and gifts that you can offer. So for example, I've just like sought out this mentor that I desperately want to work with and she's not even like taking on like clients, but I, I searched her out. I got on her calendar and I said, Hey, listen, like I'm desperate to work with you. I can't stop thinking about you. What can I do in exchange? Like, is there any, can I pay you? Can I help you with your marketing? And we found a me- a medium. So I'm going to pay her half and then I'm going to do another half in supporting her marketing. So it's like, you can do it. Like, don't let like a financial block be the block. It's not the block. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you. Thank you. (laughs) I was feeling into it. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. That was perfect. (laughs) So because that's the thing. Like, oh, I can't afford to hire someone. It's like, actually, you can. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I love that. I love working in barter systems. It's my favorite way to work. Still to this day, some of my favorite projects that I'm doing right now are on trade. Really? I haven't paid for a haircut or hair highlights in (laughs) almost five years because I do trade with the hair salon. I help them with their marketing and social media. I haven't paid for body work in three months because I'm helping my massage therapist launch her new website. So it's like, yeah, use what you got. Amazing. I actually just had a girl in my one of my workshops and as a trade, she's going to help me with my social media. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Because that's not something that's feeling like totally in alignment. But 
as somebody who's in service to your calling and your business, you know social media is an effective strategy, so you are making that happen. And that's like an exactly perfect example of what I was just sharing. So there you have it. Definitely, because it doesn't come easy to me. <laughs> and I know that it's But the must. good news is, is it comes easy to other people. So I think this is what I want to remind you about the collective is – you know, certain things that don't come easy to you are going to be somebody's complete genius zone and they're going to love to serve your business in that way and receive your genius zone. So for me, it's about energy rich experiences like this right now, totally energy rich for, for a lot of reasons, right? Beyond just the fact that we have this like love for Yandara and the spiritual practice and business, but it's energy rich in in the term, in the sense of I have a retreat coming up at Yandara. I have two more spots left. I would love to fill one of them. So this is energy Both rich because I, 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 I would like to fill <laughs> one of them through that, you know, like that's my success metric. I'm like, if I go on that podcast and I get one person on my retreat or a couple people onto my email list, like that's gonna be a really energy rich experience. And I'm gonna get to share with Yandara's podcast all of my experience and gifts and wisdom. And so it's like this energy rich exchange, even though zero money was exchanged here. So it's like, that is what I mean in terms of like more expansive thinking. Like you could go on a podcast or do a trade or, have somebody shout you out to their list or do a giveaway tomorrow. Like nothing's stopping you. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. I love, love, love that. And I think that more time that we spend thinking communally and how we can help each other instead of, you know, like how can I help myself at, a, at the expense of somebody else, which is unfortunately kind of the norm right now i think that's really the um, the type of business that you're really speaking about and that nourishes us in such a yeah. more meaningful way absolutely i think like community work living and even like group think you know when you can sit in community with other people just think of this like obviously my work and spiritual practice is so combined but like i saw my master class last night as like a group sangha you know mm -hmm. like we were just all sitting in community talking about business like that is so beautiful and all the energies that get to come through that way and accessing your collective like inside of my business collective, people can write and say, hey, who do you recommend for this? Or hey, what platform are you guys using for this? And we have these discussions on it. And it's like important to remember you're not alone. I think belonging is such like a fundamental human need. And for whatever reason in business or with our calling, it becomes even more fragile. Like we really need to feel seen. We really need to feel like we belong and are worthy of this purpose. And I think sitting in community with other people feeling that same thing, I mean, it's so powerful. If you've ever sat in any type of like intentional space, you can move mountains when other people are with you. And so just leaning on these people and reaching out too. Like if there's somebody like this is so perfect. You're like, hey, I, I, you were one of the first people I wanted to get on the pod. We've been going back and forth for a while to make this happen. And it's like you didn't stop. You stayed persistent and my assistant and you worked it out. And like if there's somebody that you want to work with and mentor you or connect with, like you just tell them, hey, Like, I want to make this happen. I'm super inspired by you. And people love it. Like, it's the most amazing thing to get. I got this text yesterday from a random girl, this DM, asking to take me to coffee because she loves my podcast and she lives nearby. And I'm like, yes, of course. Like, why wouldn't? And I felt the energy and it feels clean. So it's like, why wouldn't we lean into these things and these people that want to give us things like it's like we're afraid to receive like I'm like no I can't receive I even in my head was like I'll get coffee with her but I won't let her pay 
Mm. Like in my head, I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'll get there early. So she's not going to buy me a car. Like, what the fuck? Just receive, just receive. It's so hard for us. It's and so it hard. sucks because the person giving, it's a true gift um, for the other to receive. And so it makes that what could be energy rich experience like less um intentional or something it's funny that we're talking about this because i was just thinking about this today i swear i heard that actually when somebody does something for us or helps us in a certain way they end up liking us more and not the other mm -hmm. way around it's like mm -hmm. they invested something in mm -hmm. us or in the relationship and then i thought about it like how interesting is that that we actually feel nourished by giving by helping somebody by being there for someone it makes us feel nourished and it's such a deeply ingrained human need to help other people and this shift happening in the world right now of service oriented businesses and just humans in general really feels like such a, um, a natural and beautiful shift that's happening in the world. And having said that, the point that you brought up about how hard it is for us to receive mm -hmm. is for me, like where the block is right now, because I feel that I, way about myself as well. It's really hard. And it's funny because I want to give an example, actually, because um, I, I think about this a lot. And I think it's like, very important for like us to reach like the next level in this video game, you know, to get into this next frequency, because I look at the people who are just very embodied and humble and true, and they have no problem receiving. And I have a I have like randomly a lot of rich friends. It's my money wound, like all around me is rich people, right. And so it's like, really funny. It's my Leela. And so they're always trying to give me things which is so hard because I can't like give, like I don't have the same kind of money they have. And so it's like hard to be reciprocal. And I had a friend call me a couple years ago because they were going to give me something. And she was like, okay, I just want to let you know, this person's going to call you and going to offer you this thing. Just receive it. Don't be difficult. She had to like, tell she had to like prep me to receive something like that's so ridiculous okay so there's one example now i want to give you an example of my friend because she's one of the most embodied trusting like in her true feminine and it's hard to see people that are in their true feminine that don't yeah anyway it's just it's a powerful thing to witness somebody in true trust and i'm sure she gets anxious and i'm sure things happen but she's never worried about money she's never had a lot of money she was always renting or staying with a friend or bartering but her trust her truth like her flow her teachings her prayers i've just been amazed at well she fell in love with a billionaire and now she flies private she has a house bigger than and she's never done anything other than be her full self to get any of that she hasn't worked for that money but i see her receiving her new life in the most like pure like way and it's like why can't we like i wouldn't feel worthy of that i think about her a lot because i'm like she was just in her truth doing yoga and prayers and she speaks and she does containers, but was never seeking like this deep, like wealth, you know, a billion dollars. That's like wealth. That's like a whole nother level of what we're talking about here. And to see her just like step into this life and not feel unworthy or like she's absolutely perfect for this man. I happen to know him. So it's really funny because I knew them both before they met. And so I've really seen this pure love and there's no one more worthy or deserving I feel of this life than her because she never asked for it. She just opened to receive. 
And I, I need to tell her this at some point because I think about it all the time. And it's so beautiful to see somebody just step into this life of, I mean, and, she, and she's still her. She dresses the same. She acts the same. And now she's redoing the bathroom in her like very spiritual flowy way with like an unlimited budget. But it's still, she's not like, I don't deserve this. But it's like, she's always been that way. What's the and it's just been really, I don't know. I don't know, but her ability to just stay so true to her self-worth and receiving, I think makes all the difference here because I wouldn't be open to that life. I'm too unworthy. I don't feel that I can receive, like if someone were to drop in and say, here's a million dollars, like, would you be able to receive that right now? That's the shift that I'm working on because we're not in the frequency. Like my point is she was in the frequency. Mm. She was in that frequency of like big receiving trust. And I've watched her stay there and I don't know, I just think about it a lot. And I think talking about that is just, you know, it felt important to say because I think it's a frequency thing. A hundred percent. I totally understand what you're saying. And I, I like trust has been really showing up for me in the last few days of how, like, I find it funny that the universe, when it wants to teach you something like trust, it will put you in a situation that you're dependent on other people for answers. You don't really, you can't really do anything by yourself to move yourself forward. And then you just have no choice, but to trust that it's going to happen and surrender yeah mm -hmm. and it's just like you know it's it's intentional and it's not just like giving it all up you know you have your you know own autonomy and sovereignty but within that how can we trust that things are really working in our favor and i think this story of my friend just the trust that she's always had like she's stayed with friends she's had to put her stuff in storage because she couldn't afford the place anymore but it was really never like a, a problem and i just couldn't believe it all this time and so when she met my friend i was like this is too good <laughs> like this is so funny and of course they're perfect they're yin and yang all he ever wanted was someone who doesn't care about money, who's just soft in her feminine. And it's just one of those things that's like, wow, trust in action, you know? And so that's my prayer too, to leave people with is like your own self-trust and your own, you know, trust in yourself. Even if you can't count on other people, you can trust in yourself that you've brought the right people around you, right? Like I still think it comes back to self-trust. Yes, 100%. That that what is meant for you will come to you, that the right doors will open in the right time, that you will know what to do when the opportunity shows up. And yeah, 100%. And when it shows up, grab it. Mm. That's the second piece of it. Like it's going to sit in front of you right like this, you know, <laughs> but there's a there's a thing where you have to then take it to you, receive it to you. It's going to like dangle, but then you got to pull it into your heart. So let's do it, guys. A hundred percent. Wow. What a perfect episode for exactly what I needed to hear. That's why I love podcasting. It's like therapy. Every time I have somebody on my podcast, I'm like, who knows where we're going to go today, but all I know is it's going to be medicine. So thank you so much 100%. for having me. Well, Krista, I had so much fun. I'm so happy that we got to do this. Just as a last question, I want to ask you, what are you curious about right now? Hmm. That's such a great answer. I'm curious about slowing down and what that looks like. I'm curious about recovering while I run and figuring out how I can continue to take care of myself and my nervous system as I grow and shift into sort of like a new softer way of being. So softness, feminine, slowing down, 
that it's all very curious to me right now. <laughs> Beautiful. Krista, thank you. thank you so, so much. It was so fun and I'm looking forward for the next one. <laughs> me too. See you again soon. Now, after this time to nurture your mind and your spirit, we invite you to take a moment to consider others. A kind wish might come to mind. Know that what we learn becomes more valuable when we apply it and share it with others. So share this episode on Instagram stories, tag Yandara and I, or share with a loved one so that more people can benefit from it. Our hope is that the search will lead you home to who you already are, to what was always there. We'll be back next week with more inspiration, honest conversation, and insight into the energetic world around us. Thank you for listening and watching.